Welcome back to part two of the Land Speed Car Build. Today, me and Mr. Hands are hoping to get this thing ready to start. There's an absolute shit ton of things to bolt up to this thing still. Last episode, we got the engine in, we got the timing cover on, the coolant hard pipe, the dipstick, and I think that is literally about it. So yeah, still tons of things to get done. So we're gonna just jump straight on into it. All right, so since <laughs> it's only my head in here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so since we have one cylinder blocked off, we had to get some of these made. So this is our exhaust manifold gasket slash block off plate. We're gonna stack OEM gaskets on either side of it. And yeah, this will just make sure no air gets into the blocked off cylinder. All right, time to throw on our Tomei header. We blew it out with an air chuck because obviously the engine blew up and there was quite a few pieces of metal still in this thing. But, should be pretty good now. We're gonna throw it on. Line her up. Oh, fuck. Okay, there we go. Come on, mate. Come on, you wanker. Oh, come on, other side. Come on. Oh, that last stood, why? Why? There we go. Yep. Okay, I'm holding. <laughs> yeah, you're getting her on there, Mr. Hand. Send it, see what happens? Oh yeah, thank you. All right, so the header's on. We are not tightening it though, because with the extra gaskets, it can kind of throw things off. So we're gonna get everything on together, then we'll tighten everything. Pro tip. All right, next up is our Tommy Arms MX7760. Um, we're gonna also blow this out with an air chuck just in case some metal did get in it, but the impeller blades look fine and there's no play in the shaft whatsoever, so should be good to go on. turbo's on, now we can go ahead and tighten our manifold, our up pipe to the manifold, yada yada. Okay, next we're doing the coolant drain line and we're realizing it's something we should have done while the motor was out. So now, now Mr. Hands is paying for it dearly. <laughs> Having fun over there? No. <laughs> All right, there's that coolant drain pipe we had to get on proper pain in the ass, so if you're doing something like this, put that on before you put the engine in the goddamn car. <sighs> now that's done, we're gonna go grab some lunch, so roll the B-roll, Polly. That's bad. That is bad. <laughs> I don't know if I can get back to work after this. <laughs> All right, back from lunch. We're putting the starter in, and there must have been sleeping pills in my tacos because, man, I don't even remember what day of the week it is. Those are good though, huh? Mmm, <sighs> 
starter's in, now it's time for the crossover pipe. Oh, sorry, Mr. Hands. Won't fall asleep on the job again. They do, they literally do. Well, as you can tell, uh, coolant hard pipe's on. Next is ACVS. Um, all right, so the ACVS is now completely routed. And besides, you know, besides uh, all we need is just you know, plug it in. But that's not till later. With the cam position sensors in, now we're gonna do the spark plugs, and we would have most definitely done those while the engine was out, but we just didn't have them at the time, and we didn't want to wait, so we just threw the motor in. Luckily, we have a pretty bare bone engine bay, so they're not really that hard to do. But if you're installing a Subaru motor, definitely always do the spark plugs before you put the motor in. Next up, we have Process West TGV deletes. And you know, this is a race car. We're not gonna be driving this on the street, so these are completely good to go. All right, so next we gotta do the PCV system, but I believe originally we're using this breather port, or this one right here actually, but looks like it got blocked off, so now we're gonna have to adjust this to use this guy right here. Look guys, it's my dad. <laughs> he came back from the dead to work on this car again. <laughs> Those Pfizer vaccines really do a number on it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we figure out the ventilation system. We got the crank pulley on. We got the pitch stop on. Um, I'm sweating nuts again, so excuse the clipped mic to my t-shirt, and now it's time to get How do you make good videos? This on. <laughs> like what like watching what you do compared mm -hmm. to like what I see? Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same. No? Very different. Very different. <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Now what? Um, I think it's Alternator? intake manifold time. Okay. Because alternator going after would be easy. Okay. So. Mm. Okay. <sighs> oh, damn. Process West did really make a piece of art. All right, what am I doing? Hey, then give me. There we go. That's okay, bye, Wait, you're at home, Rick? You have the time now. Well, Rick, say bye to all your fans. <laughs> bye, Dad.
<laughs> oh, we had to loosen that side of the intake manifold and the spacers to be able to squeeze that inlet pipe on. Now we just got to tighten back down. Uh, I don't know what's next, down pipe or intake? Alternator. Oh, alternator. All right, well, we got the alternator bolted up and uh, it's about 7, 7.30 right now. Uh, me and Mr. Hands are pooped, uh, so we're gonna call it and we'll see you guys in the morning, quote unquote. I'm not splitting the video, I'm literally gonna see you in like five seconds, but yeah. See you then. All right, welcome back. It's day three now of us trying to put this thing back together. I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, it should have been done like two whole days ago. Well, this thing's been sitting for a year, completely taken apart. The parts, the hardware are absolutely scattered everywhere through the shop. And then on top of that, there's also tons of custom stuff that are absolutely unique to this exact specific car. And so some of that stuff takes, you know, quite a bit of time to figure out how it goes on, what order it goes on in. You know, on top of that, I've never personally worked on this car. Mr. Hands has taken this car apart, but like I said, that was almost a year ago. So yeah, before you go in the comments and start going, oh, motor should have been in like two days ago. Just take that into consideration. But without further ado, we need to put the radiator in, put the downpipe on, and that's like it? Intake. Oh, intake. Well, whatever, that's two minutes. All right, so let's get cracking. Yeah? Beauty. United States of America. Oh yeah. It's a new week. We're back again working on the land speed car. And I know some of you are already noticing, well, why are the headlights gone? Why is this bumper barely attached? And well, we've been talking to IAG. You know, they obviously built this motor. Thanks again. And one of the main things they're concerned about is, well, oil pressure. They're, since the rear oiling ports are blocked off, they're worried that we might have pretty high oil pressure and maybe even froth the oil, which is not good because that means we just lose another engine. So they said a good idea would be to expand the oil capacity. So we reached out to Perrin and they were kind enough to send us over their oil cooler. So me and Mr. Hands are gonna throw that on there, get the fluids in there, get the proper O2 sensor in there. We still need a coolant overflow tank a battery, and I think that should be it. We'll probably let Rick have a once over once we're done with all that and hopefully turn the key. So let's not waste any time. Let's get it going. Okay. Is that? Cool.
Okay, so while Mr. Hands is finishing up mounting the oil cooler, I'm gonna put on the oil thermostat and the spacer. Here we go, one-handed. Oh, I'm such a pro. I want to point it a little bit this way so the fittings don't hit anything and yeah I might have to put the camera down for this so I could torque this thing yeah roughly something like this well oil cooler install is done I wish we could run this thing like this just looks like such a cyberpunk mobile it's still getting about three quarters of the Thing. Right. And I mean, air can go around it either way. So there's. Oh, that, the bottom section of the bumper needs one of those smaller clips. So we have all the fluids in, coolant, oil, battery. Rick had his once over, so I guess moment of truth right here, we're about to let her rip. Alrighty guys, well, there you have it. She started up, she ran. Sorry for the lack of footage of this thing actually running, but unfortunately the AVCS started making a, a very bad noise. Rick confirmed it with a probe, nothing's really going on inside the engine, but AEM doesn't like something about the AVCS. It seems to be specific towards the driver's side one as well, so we're gonna need to iron that out, but as of right now, super happy. I mean, she ran for probably around a total of five minutes on and off, um, and nothing went miserably wrong. So yeah, I'm gonna tackle that issue, and then in the next episode, we're gonna be taking this thing to get it tuned. So stay tuned for that, guys. As always, consider dropping a like and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.